everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Just STEM Stuff, where I go over tips, tricks, techniques, and other concepts to help jumpstart your innovation journey. So sorry about the delay in posting. Since this year was wrapping up when we all started quarantining, I decided to work on and pursue some new projects, which you will receive an update about. However, I am back and I will be posting monthly. Today, we're going to be discussing the beyond amazing technology behind 3D printed face masks, face shields, and other personal protective equipment. So let's start out with the basic idea of what 3D printing is. So 3D is an abbreviation for three-dimensional. When you print out something on a printer, a normal printer at your house, there's only two dimensions on that sheet of paper. Three-dimensional printing adds a third dimension, which is volume. Before we start, there is two types of main manufacturing. First is additive manufacturing, and the second is subtractive. So 3D printing is a type of additive manufacturing where it adds on your material layer by layer. Subtractive, on the other hand, is when you start out with a block of some sort and it then gets cut down to give you your desired shape. So what are some of the applications of 3D printing? So in general, some of the main applications could be printing replacement parts or other tools and toys for not only entertainment, but also for functional purposes. There's also the latest developments in bioprinting to help out with prosthetics and even artificial organs, which is so cool. However, there's one very obvious thing. We are all sitting at home in the middle of a pandemic. So what are some of the applications of 3D printing for that? And that is exactly why I'm here to talk to you today. So one of the biggest things is people are starting to 3D print face masks and other PPE. People were doing it before, but now we're doing it more than ever. So we're going to run this vlog in a Q&A sort of format. First question. What are the FDA's recommendations for 3D printing medical devices? So the FDA has previously issued guidance on the idea of 3D printing PPE. The guidance outlines the FDA's recommendation for 3D printing devices starting out from building to processing and the usage, which will be discussed in the blog post paired up with this vlog. And the blog, as a reminder, can be found in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Question two. What should we be sure of when we are using 3D printed PPE, especially masks? So some of the things that we should do are one, check the 3D printed mask seal for leaks or any other ways that air can escape through. Second, confirm that you can breathe and do everyday activities with the mask. Third, understand that the mask may not provide the ultimate filtration. And lastly, safely dispose of any infectious materials and disinfect the mask. These are all great things to look at, not only for 3D printing masks, but any mask that you're looking to purchase. The idea with 3D printing masks is since you're doing it from your own house or your own local 3D printing facility, you want to make sure it is as safe as possible for you. Question three. Does 3D printing personal protective equipment offer faster production rather than ordering it from the store? This is a great question and often a common misconception as well. While it may seem that 3D printing equipment may be faster, it's also fairly time consuming. Since 3D printers are typically restricted to print one CAD file at a time, depending on the size, the process can take some time. However, it does provide a faster production of PPE from your own house or local 3D printing store, with without having to worry about shipping costs, times, and other related activities. Question number four, what can I do to help out? Which I think is a great question. There are all sorts of organizations that are looking for donations for masks or just in ways that you can produce masks to give out to others, especially those that are 3D printed. If you do have a 3D printer at your house and do meet their suggested requirements, you are able to freely donate masks and shields as well as to anybody and these organizations and work with them for community service. A great example is Hack the Pandemic. They have created an open source 3D printing file that anybody can use to print masks at home. Not only do they work on 3D printing masks, but they're looking at how the latest developments in technology play a role in PPE production. So their motto is, let's hack this pandemic with nanotech, active materials, 3D printing, and distributed manufacturing. So they're covering everything, which I think is awesome. So that's all for this month's episode of Just STEM Stuff. I want to remind you that I have created a blog that includes some of the more in-depth Q&A as well as some organizations that you can check out for PPE production. The link to the blog is in the description below. 
And I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel to hear more about great tips in your innovation journey. Make sure to like the video by clicking that thumbs up and turn on the notification bell to get a notification every time I post a video. And thank you to everyone who supports this channel, and I will see you next month. That's all for now. Bye!